What's up, everybody? Uh, happy Friday to you. You'll notice that I'm not in my usual Friday spot. That's because uh, it's nighttime, and outside my apartment is the king of all spiders, and he is feeding and scary. So I'm going to stay in here where it's safe. Uh, Oregon, Arizona, 7.30 tomorrow night on ESPN. A lot of good analysis on addictedtoquack.com. Check it out. Uh, in brief, uh, we were looking at two offenses led by two spread visionaries, Rich Rodriguez and Chip Kelly. Uh, Coach Kelly runs the best spread program in the country. I don't think there's any question about that. And Coach Rodriguez, one of the founding fathers of the modern spread, uh, credited with inventing the zone read option, in fact. Uh, so because of that, Coach Rich Rodriguez, indirectly responsible for the Ducks winning the 2012 Rose Bowl. So that's great. Thank you for that, Coach Rodriguez. The... Biggest advantage Oregon has over Arizona is on defense. Oregon's been able to, through recruiting and continuity with the coaching staff, been able to put together a full two deep of athletes while Rich Rodriguez in his first year uh, working with predominantly Mike Stoops' guys, and it's a much less deep unit. They're only going to play uh, about 14 or 15, uh, getting significant time. And with two offenses that run up-tempo uh, like Oregon and Arizona's do in the second half especially uh, stamina becomes an issue for defenses and so having six less guys that are playing um, can really wear down Arizona's defense and I think that's where Oregon's going to be able to attack uh, Arizona's defense has been described I've read multiple places uh, Arizona's defense been described as scrappy which is a very nice way of saying not as talented as other teams so that sort of gives you the idea of what Oregon's offense is going up against. Uh, the key for Oregon's offense is going to be to limit mistakes. Uh, Oregon has had a proclivity for turnovers through the first three games, uh, and there's no easier way to turn a multi-touchdown favorite into a nail-biter than by squandering scoring opportunities through turnovers, through quick three-and-outs, um, basically wasted possessions. Uh, so Marcus Mariota, it's really on his shoulders to run an efficient offense, make the right reads, not try and force passes, uh, and really be able to put together some good drives, um, allow the rest of his playmakers around him to create. And if he can do that, then Oregon's going to run at maximum, and we could put, and we will put 50-plus up on Arizona's defense. If not, uh, then it becomes a little bit more interesting. For Oregon's defense, uh, the keys are going to be first and foremost tackling efficiency. I think the team that tackles the best, makes the best first tackles and the most first tackles is going to be the team that wins. Uh, the spread, the design of the spread is to get playmakers in space in one-on-one -on -one tackling situations and uh, let them make a play to make get a missed tackle and then go 20 plus yards. Um, Ifo Ekpreolomu, Terrence Mitchell on the edges. They've done a very good job so far of um, making that first tackle. Um, if they can do that, hold Arizona's receivers to minimal gains, uh, we are going to see Arizona's offense grind to a halt um, and become really disrupted. Uh, if they're letting uh, players go, if they're missing tackles, then it's going to get much more interesting as well. On the other side of the ball, same deal. If DeAnthony Thomas and Josh Huff are making guys miss, then Oregon's offense is going to have no problem. If Arizona's secondary is making tackles, combine that with missed tackles on the other side of the ball, and the Wildcats put, could potentially walk out of Autzen with a win. Um, the other key for the defense is going to be to um, get a good push up front, both in the pass and in the run. Arizona running back Kadeem Carey, he's really the only guy back there um, for the Wildcats. Backup running back Daniel Jenkins only averaging seven carries a game, so it's really Carey's world back there. Uh, so stopping him behind the line, not letting him get to the second level, um, putting some good hits on him is really going to go a long way to making Arizona's offense one-dimensional. Uh, by that same token, uh, quarterback Matt Scott has looked very good through three games, uh, but this is an offensive line that can be susceptible to allowing uh, sacks and allowing a pass rush. And this is a defense that can mix up blitzes and get to the quarterback. Um, so being able to do that, um, get some sacks, get some bad throws, possibly force a turnover, um, is going to go a long way to making this a um, 
a walk early as opposed to letting Arizona hang around in this game. Uh, ultimately, I think the depth, especially on defense, is going to allow Oregon to pull away for, in this one. But don't be surprised if we see Arizona hanging around for the first half. I think eventually it can become, if Oregon performs the way they can um, efficiently and without mistakes, it can become a performance like last year's in Tucson when LaMichael James set the all-time Oregon single-game rushing record. Uh, I think this offense can be that good against Arizona's defense, um, but turnovers could change all that. Looking around the Pac-12, uh, a big game in the Rose Bowl as UCLA takes on Oregon State. This was not a game that I looked at as being a big game coming into the season, but UCLA has looked very good through three games, and Oregon State has that one win over Wisconsin. Um, it remains to be seen how quality of a win that is, uh, it's becoming more and more clear that Wisconsin's football team this year is a bit of a dumpster fire. So uh, we're not sure right now if that win is because Oregon State's good or if because Wisconsin's just bad. Uh, so this game in Pasadena will be a very good measuring stick for the Beavers. Um, if they can go in and knock off UCLA, we could be looking like someone who could cause some noise in the Pac-12 North, being the Oregon State Beavers. Crazy as it sounds. Uh, Washington State gets a proverbial bye this week as they take on Colorado. I'm not, gonna, I'm not even going to talk about it. Colorado's bad. Washington State's going to win by a lot. Um, USC and Cal this week. Uh, California coming off. While it was a loss, I think it was a very good performance against Ohio State in the horseshoe. Uh, Zach Maynard, until he Zach Maynard, Maynarded all over the place uh, with that late interception. Uh, he looked really good. He actually had one of his better games in a Golden Bear uniform. Uh, but last year's USC performance was atrocious, one of his worst ever. I think he threw five interceptions. Uh, so which Maynard will show up on Saturday, that remains to be seen. Uh, if the good Maynard shows up, Cal's got a shot, especially if they give the ball to Brendan Bigelow, who had two highlight reel runs against Ohio State and is really kind of looking like a young Jonathan Stewart, which is a little bit scary to think about. Uh, USC, meanwhile, coming off the loss to Stanford. Uh, we'll see this Saturday if that's just a blip on the radar or if it's really a trend uh, with USC's football team being not as good as we thought. Uh, my, my gut feeling on this is that they're going to come out with something to prove um, that they're not that team who lost last week and they're going to win easily over Cal. But you never know. Um, Cal has the talent to contend with USC it, um, it's just a matter of putting it all together. Uh, the last game of the week in the Pac-12 is an interesting one in the Pac-12 South. Uh, Utah traveling to Tempe to take on Arizona State. Uh, Utah lost Jordan Wynn for the year, but quarterback John Hayes came in against BYU last week, looked very good. Um, if he can continue that play, um, the Utes could go in and grab a road win against Arizona State who are coming off a loss to Missouri and are looking to bounce back. So that's a look around the Pac-12 and uh, the keys to the game for Oregon, Arizona. Um, be sure to check out Addicted to Quack all day Saturday for game threads and open chats and yada, 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 and all that good stuff and um, the best comments around on the web. Uh, <laughs> so um, have a good Friday and a good rest of the weekend. Go Ducks. We'll catch you next time.